postpartum care practice. Wait, Susan, I'm sorry, we start have, over. So today's maternity scenario is going to be a postpartum care scenario. Um, Eva Manchin is a 26-year-old woman. She's grabbed a four, pair of three. She delivered about six hours ago after a precipitous delivery. She's had a first-degree tear, which was repaired. She is GBS negative, Hep B immune, rubella immune, O positive. Um, she's in the rooming in with her baby. Her husband's been with her since the delivery, but I think he's gone down for some coffee this morning. She was stable. And uh, do you have, let's see, any questions for me? Uh, she been out of bed yet this morning? She has not been out of bed yet. Um, her past medical history is unremarkable. She's not with no known drug allergies. And um, just the three prior pregnancies, all that ended in term births. Um, and her OB is Dr. Natal, the pediatrician is Dr. Smiles. Okay. So up to now, she's been doing fairly well. Okay. Has she okay. avoided? Fundus has been firm. Um, has not voided yet. Okay. And she's getting 20 units of Pitocin? What's hanging now is the 20 units of Pitocin okay. at 125 an hour. Okay. Yeah. And that will be replaced by the 10 units. Okay. Per, per our protocol. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. No. Check her blood pressure. Now I'm not 
to say it out loud, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and also when I'm interviewing you guys, I'd love this sound to be, that beeping to be gone. To be gone? Yeah. Most parts of the same. situations. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to practice skills and what you've learned from our didactic classroom on how to respond to an emergency. By practicing here you can try on different roles and become more comfortable that when you get to the real situation you will actually function at a more optimal level and not be quite as nervous. It also gives us a op great opportunity to talk about what you've learned to answer your questions and to um, generally understand the process better, the nursing process, complete with you know your assessment, your diagnosis, your plan of care, your implementation, and then reevaluation. Mm -hmm. So it's a good place for us to do that in a safe environment where we're not dealing with patients who are truly in the emergency situation. Nurse and lady to have. A right lower lobe pneumonia or to have asthma, to have an airway obstruction. We can give the sim man or lady. Um, we can even create a pneumothorax mm -hmm. and have you work on um, the reduction of that or, or use, use of chest tubes we can hook up to the sim man or sim lady. So we're hoping that it's going to be a really um, enjoyable experience, certainly one that helps you learn and understand our material in a more full fashion. In the hospitals we don't always get the kinds of patients that we know that you need to practice with, so uh, this gives us our opportunity to create our own patients. So, We have a sim baby too, right? We do have a sim baby and we have a sim child who is a little lower tech, but we can do several things with him. Yeah, that's so we have other things other than the sim man, we have 
Sim yes, we have a Sim, Sim family. We, currently we have Sim Baby and we have a Sim Child. The Sim Child is a little lower tech than the Sim Baby and Sim Man. The man can be a man or a woman. And we're expecting to get uh, a nursing mother as well, or a pregnant mother. Now when you say so, the man can be a man or a woman? Yes, we have to do, we change um, delicate parts on the body to make him a man or a woman. Today we had a, a bandana on to simulate a woman with her hair. Um, much as you would see if a woman had, uh, maybe was in the hospital for breast cancer. A lot of women wear, they've lost their hair. But we also have wigs for the sim mannequin so that we can make it look more realistic like a woman. So. Yeah, very, very real. No, it's yeah. very interesting. We, we do have you sign a confidentiality form. So that you know that what stays, what happens here in the sim lab stays in the sim lab, much is the same as at the hospital, following HIPAA regulations. Um, and we also ask you to sign that you will suspend disbelief because we want you to treat these mannequins as though they were truly real patients. And that takes a little getting used to, but I think you find that once you've done a few scenarios, it's pretty easy to get into the role. So. The mannequins here are very, very realistic. They can cry, they can scream, cough, they can even bleed. Um, you can do anything that you can necessarily do on a real life patient in the hospital, you can do to these mannequins. It's a great learning tool. It's very, very interesting. We can, we can have students catheterize um, the mannequins, both as a male patient or as a female patient. Yep. Um, uh, they can even be intubated if they needed to be. Um, the mannequin has dentures that can be removed so that we can teach students in fundamentals how to do um, dental care, give the basic care for the adult patient. There are lots of opportunities. So now that we've run this scenario, um, and it, you've actually run it a few times and you've gotten more com comfortable with your role,